speak to you in the name of the living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I was in middle school when I heard that the only two certainties in life are death and taxes. And I'm fairly sure whichever adult said it was having a bad day. Because they directed it towards me, and that's not the kind of thing you tell somebody in middle school. The only certainties are death and taxes. I don't want to put that on my parents, so we'll blame my uncle. Uncles are notorious for making bad decisions, right? I say that as an uncle. The only thing in life that is certain are death and taxes, but for we who believe in the resurrection, the only thing certain in life then are taxes. Death is just a blip. Death no longer has any hold over us. Death does not exist for us anymore. Death is simply a transition from this life to the next, and yet you would never know it looking at cemeteries that belong to churches and columbariums and the huge amount of pay to headstones and what it says on the headstone and where people want to be buried. Don't bury me next to Joe. We'll be fighting forever. No, you won't. You all are dead. And I've had people want to change their columbarium niche and they said well I was married to to Samuel but now I'm married to Maury and and really I think I should be with Maury. Ma'am neither one of those men care. (laughs) But we care and and I've heard the argument for for cemeteries and columbariums and and memorials is not for the dead but for the living. But it is so much easier for me to look at pictures of my grandparents on the wall or for me to see a shirt that my grandmother gave me or a book and to think my Grammy gave me that, my grandma gave me that, my grandpa gave me that. Then for me to travel all the way to Indiana and find their headstones. Why do we pay so much attention to the dead if we believe in the resurrection? Ezekiel sees the valley of dry bones, and God says to Ezekiel, these these only lack flesh and breath, and they will become whole once again. Jesus calls Lazarus from the tomb, and Lazarus is alive. After four days being dead, Lazarus rises from the tomb. In the ancient world, the rabbi said that if somebody was dead for more than three days, they were gone. It is very intentional that he was dead for four days. There was no coming back. And yet Lazarus rises from the dead. And he comes back. We are a people of the resurrection. A people of hope. In the spring of 2012, I ran the Warrior Dash. If you're not familiar with the Warrior Dash, it is a 5K run with lots of obstacles. There are walls to climb and ropes to climb and burning things to jump over. And I trained for it, and I ran, and I did upper body training, and and we were encouraged to wear costumes. And this was before I had any children. And so I had hair. And so I I, I took all kinds of products and I spiked my hair up and I painted half my face blue and and I went to the Goodwill and I got a plaid skirt and I was a Highlander. I was Scottish. I'm not actually Scottish, I'm Welsh. I don't know what the Welsh do when they get all fancied up though, so I was Scottish. I had these pictures made of of me making the ferocious face beforehand, and I was wearing a a white t-shirt. And the whole race was going well. I climbed up the ropes and the walls, and I jumped over the burning things. 
got towards the very end. And there was a, a big ditch of water. It was too small to be a pond. It's about 10 yards across. And we had to jump in the water and climb over a log and get to the other side. And it was cold. It was April, but it was cold. And part of me was like, I'm done. I'm done. The other part was, no, we train for this. We're going to do this. And I had hope. I had faith. And I jumped in that water, and my whole body rebelled and tried to jump out of its own accord. My heart was angry. What are you doing to me? And I swam over to the other side. And I get out, and to add insult to injury, the very last part of the race, we had to crawl through mud under barbed wire. And so I get out, and my white shirt is all saggy and brown, and my makeup is run, and I pose for a picture, and I'm no longer fierce. I'm just like, I have made it. <laughs> and what got me through was hope. And what got me through was also shame. I didn't, I didn't want to stop running. I didn't want to stop the race. I didn't want to be ashamed of not finishing. And, and so I had hope that I could finish and hope that I wouldn't be ashamed. And shame is a topic for another Sunday. But I finished. And in no small part because of prayer, I can do th all things through Christ who strengthens me over and over and over when I was in that water and crawling through that mud. During the middle of COVID, I read a poem that was very apt. It was written for COVID, and it said, Emily Dickinson was wrong. Hope is not a thing with feathers. It is not delicate. Hope is a sewer rat missing one eye. Hope is something that never gives up. Hope is something that is not afraid to fight. Hope is something that will fight you over a french fry. And if you don't like the image of hope being a sewer rat, I like to think of hope maybe being a crow. The crows are very scrappy, and they will fight a squirrel for the last french fry. But hope is not delicate. Hope is hardy. Hope is not afraid to get dirty. Hope is not afraid to fight. Hope perseveres and digs in and says, I'm not going to quit. And what gives me hope, what gives me the faith to keep going is Christ. Christ who yelled outside the tomb, come out, get up. Christ is yelling to us, come out of your funk, of your anxiety, your fear, your jealousy, your anger. Come out and unbind yourself from all the things that are holding you down. Come out and stand up. At the beginning of John's Gospel, we hear that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and through Him all things came into being. This week, Jesus simply stands outside the tomb and yells, Come out! And through his word, and the authority in his word, and his connection to God, Lazarus stands up. And he walks out of the tomb. There are so many things for which to despair in this world. So many reasons not to hope. But again and again, I tell you, the reasons to hope always outweigh the reasons not to. Jesus is calling us through his word, his love, his grace. Christ is calling us, and he is saying, don't give up. 
Don't stop. Keep going. Though the water is cold, keep going. Though the nights are long, keep going. Though the grief seems never-ending, keep going. We are people of the resurrection, people of hope, people of faith, people of love. We have been promised a world where there is no fear, no suffering, no anger, no jealousy, but joy everlasting, love never ending, death is only a blip, a moment. lose someone, when someone dies, we mourn for ourselves because we miss them. But as people of the resurrection, we always rejoice. We always rejoice that our loved one is home. Because this is not home. We are here but a while. We are called to something greater. To stand up. To come out. To be free. And to love as we are loved.